everyone, thanks for joining this tutorial. This time we will simulate a vibrating screen to determine its efficiency using ANSYS Rocky. So let's proceed with the setup. Click on the new project icon and save it accordingly. On the study section, write some notes related to the setup of the model. For physics, ensure that gravity is enabled. The adhesive force is excluded this time, but select the rolling resistant model. Import the geometry of the screen in STL format and select millimeters as the input unit. Now drag and drop the geometry into the workspace. Remember to use the mouse options to rotate pan and zoom in and out. You can also change the color of the background and text if needed. In this step we will create the inlet surface for the feed flow of particles. Change the coordinates and sizes as shown. If you are using your own geometry, use appropriate values. Now, let's take a look at the vibration motion. We have the feed material that goes through the screen. This results into flows, the overflow and the underflow. But the screen needs a vibration motion. In general, ANSYS Rocky allows to set up several parameters but for a linear vibration, we need only three of them. First, the amplitude. Second, the frequency. And third, the phase, that determines the initial position. The slope of this screen is 35 degrees, and it's a parameter that may change in further simulations. Now, we're going to set up the motion. Create the motion frame with the slope angle. Next, add a new motion. As mentioned before, select Periodic Translation. Now create two variables. These will be input variables for the optimization in part 2. Enter the name of each variable and then specify the value for this simulation. You can view the input variables so far from the Tools tab. Finally, Add the vibration motion to the screen. For this demo, we will work with the default material properties and the material interactions. If you want, you can check the values by picking on both lists. Now it's time to create the particles. Remember that in this demo, we will work with the particle size distribution the one shown on the graph. Create the new spaces and type the values accordingly. Once we have the inlet surface and the particle set up, we can define the inlet boundary condition. Create a particle inlet and select the rectangular surface and the particles. In this step, type the mass flow rate and the time. In domain settings, we have to define a custom boundary box that exceeds the limit of the geometry. This will allow ANSYS Rocky to compute the particles in the overflow region. Finally, in the solver, define the simulation time, decrease the time step, and select the number of cores for processing the simulation.
Once the simulation is finished, we can proceed with the post-processing. Go to the Particle section and select Particle Size. In the animation, observe the screen vibrating and how the underflow and overflow appear. You can also select another property for the counter plot. For this demo, we need to extend the simulation time. Go to Solver and extend the time in 15 seconds for an overall time of 25 seconds. This will help us in the calculation of deficiency. So run the simulation and get results. Now let me take this picture to explain how the screen efficiency is calculated. As you know, we have the overflow, the underflow, and the feed. First, we must know the mass of the large particles in the overflow compared to those in the feed. And second, the mass of the small particles in the underflow compared to those in the feed. The efficiency is then the multiplication of these two quantities. For achieving this in ANSYS Rocky, we have to create two regions to quantify the particles and create three properties to filter those particles. Here you see a graphical explanation of the mass information needed for the efficiency calculation. So now let's create the two regions first. Begin with the region for the underflow particles, those that have 180 millimeters or less in diameter. Use the coordinates as shown and you will see how the region updates automatically. Next, create the region for the overflow particles also using the given coordinates. Let's continue defining the three properties mentioned before. Remember that we need those properties to filter the particles in both regions. The first filter is for the small particles in the feed. By saying small particles are those particles up to 180 millimeters in diameter. The second filter is for the large particles in the feed. This time, the term large particles refers to those with more than 180 millimeters in diameter. And the last filter is for the large particles in the overflow. So this time, it must be created from that region. Finally, we need an expression to calculate the mass of each group of particles. Remember that those groups are the four that are part of the equations in the screen efficiency. In particles, create a custom curve, select the unit, and click in particle mass n. We must type this expression that returns the cumulative sum of the particle's mass over time. As a result, you will see the custom curve in the list even for each of the four groups of particles. Let's create a time plot to see their evolution over time. Drag and drop the custom curves to the time plot. You will see the difference in the undersized particles that mainly affects the efficiency. Now at last, the time has come to calculate the efficiency. This can be done in the table by creating the three equations and then visualizing the results.
scroll down to see the maximum efficiency. This screen has 67%, as you can see how several small particles are still present in the overflow. This is an opportunity to improve the screen performance. And now, time for an extra tip. Export the data from the columns you want and create a plot. This concludes the first part. See you in the second video for the optimization. Thanks for watching. Thank you.